one that we're on now. Refresh it. Refresh. Let me check on my torch. I don't know how to use this. Just it says we got nobody here, but we got people here because I got people that are texting me and they're like, "We're here." Yeah. Hey, text me if we're live. Yeah, if you guys can see us, if you can see that we're live, we yeah, just please text uh, because while we try to figure this out, I, I think we're some. in a good spot. We're definitely like it's capturing Def audio. Well, yeah, and, and Patrick just logged on and said, "I have last year's Belmora." Belmora. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So we got to be live somewhere. Patrick, thank you for joining us. Yeah, if you're, um, if you're hearing us better. How was last year's Balmora? You might want to send us a little message in the Throw chat area. Chat there. Um, we, 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 we oh, we're very, live. Yeah. It's live. Oh, oh we are. Okay, good. We're, live. we're live. live. We're live. We're live. We're not going to mess with it. Very good. So. Hey! So there we What's go. What's up, KJ? We got, we got somebody. All right, so we're, we're happening, but that count in the bottom is not there. Well, good it's evening. It's updating. And, and welcome to those viewers that we have. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Um, Welcome to the inaugural cast of the Barrel, Barrel Buddies. Buddies. Barrel Buddies. That's us. We are the Barrel Buddies. Uh, so let's just uh, introduce kind of who we are. Please go ahead. You first. You're in the front center. Uh, so I'm Brian, and uh, you can call me Kick Askins because that's what I like to use as my it's your handle. Tag. That's it's my like handle. Your, like your, is that your CB handle, like a trucker? You're on the road. There, there you go, good buddy. Kick here. Kick Askins, what's up? 10-4, good buddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, uh, to my left, we have... My name is Zach. The one and only. You can call me Zach. Excellent. You don't have a handle that you'd like to go by? or Not yet, but... Uh, we'll, we'll get you there. You know we'll we'll, uh, we'll have that audience formulate some type of... Yeah, please, uh, again, typey typey in the chat if you've got a suggestion for Actually, Zach. Actually, no, I do have a handle on Twitch already. ZachDial123. That is in, wow! That is very creative. It should <laughs> really be. Uh, yeah. It should be nine one one. Ah, I like that. Could do that. Or we can really giggle and just be Zach Dial sixty nine. <laughs> four twenty. Four twenty. Sixty nine. Four twenty. Sixty nine. One two three four. <laughs> I agree. Uh, and then the brainchild, and and we wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for, for this guy right here, <clears throat> James. Howdy there, everybody. No, um, he's Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy Jam. Jimmy John Jameson. That can, that can be my handle, Jimmy Jam. Yeah. Well, everybody, um, we have a few people, and, and we've actually blasted this out to some friends, so we're going to give it a few more minutes, so be patient with us. Uh, I mean, we can really just kind of talk about what this was, like how we conceived it yeah. and what we plan to... The next thing on the agenda here into, is, right? uh, I, I do want to share that, so the three of us, uh, do we have any credibility? No, not, none. We actually just like drinking a lot of whiskey, and we drank a lot. Um, so as alcoholics, <clears> I would say we, we've got some credibility. Um, no, we've got 43 years of Las Vegas hospitality underneath our belt collectively. We've been in food and beverage and hotel hospitality management uh, and climbed the ranks and ladders and continue to climb the ranks and ladders. And so uh, we, we'd say we're okay connected. Yeah. Okay connected. Yeah. And, and we're I, okay. And like yeah. And yeah. just, you know, I, a lot of people say that because, you know, we'll get some people that'll come in here and they'll be like, oh, well, you know, out of these Jamokes know what uh, what they're talking about. And, I've been in Las Vegas hospitality for X number of well, years. I don't a, know you. Yeah, but it's not only that, but it's it's credibility for what we're doing. So right. what 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 are what we do and what we've been doing for years is at least once or twice a week we always get together and we you know pull something off the bar and drink it, whether it's a whiskey or a beer or a scotch or a bourbon, and you know after rinse and repeating that over time we're like why don't we televise this or get an audience because some of our conversations in the past have been pretty hilarious yeah and, they, they tend to go down some some rabbit holes yeah and um i have you know love to talk to people about alcohol i mean i talk to co-workers just random people at you know the booth shop and um we can just take it online and expand the audience dramatically so mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's a that's a really good thing so yeah barrel buddies is just it's it's our opportunity to taste and explore all barrel aged spirits and beers uh and then introduce the interwebs and all of you uh, on how to approach these magical beverages there's a lot that goes into the barrel aging process uh that changes um something that was already good into something that was immensely better so mm -hmm. 
Uh, tonight we're going to try something a little different. Also, yeah, we're hanging out together. You guys are hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, I've blasted out to a few of my friends on social media. I know these guys have as well. Uh, so like I said, we're going to keep uh, waiting Play a little bit of a waiting game. I expect yeah. that we're not going to get too many people this first stream. But, yeah, it's a, uh, but we appreciate you, know? you. Yes. All three of our viewers. Oh. What's up, KJ and Katie? <laughs> Katie Bee's knees. Um, all right. So. I don't know that I want to jump right into the whiskey. Like, I think that's kind of like, just leave it there. And. Yeah, so cool. Or why don't we pour it? How about that? Yeah, we're going to definitely do We're going to pour it, that. but we're not. So get a little of that ethanol burn off of it. Yeah, yeah let it breathe. Right? James, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking uh, out of High, Texas. A little Garrison Brothers. And High is H-Y-E. It's in the middle of Texas. It's got a very beautiful uh, beautiful piece of neckwear. But for those a a people, little obnoxious, let's be honest. It's, it's a little. It did win something. This is the, uh, <laughs> the Garrison Brothers Balmora. Balmora, Balmora. It's a uh, double oaked whiskey. Whiskey. And uh, why do we have this in the uh, in the whiskey bar? Well, that's a really good question. So on the West Coast, for those that don't know uh, us, we're on the West Coast, obviously from Vegas here, and uh, we really, I don't think we have a really good selection of spirits that we get here. <clears throat> now we have an advantage because of obviously these gigantic casinos and Vegas is a party drinking town. But, you know, we're not down the street in like Bourbon County, Kentucky from some amazing distillery that we can just wander on down to and grab a, you know, a bottle of some distillery only release. So we also are in the middle of the desert. So it's not a great environment for a distillery, even though I will say Smoke Wagon is a local distillery and it's amazing. And they make uh, whiskey. Thanks to this uh, guy, I have been able to enjoy it. Oh, yes. Yeah, Smoke Wagon is very pretty hot, spectacular. Very delicious, though. Yes. Oh, I don't think it's hot at all. I have the uncut, unfiltered, and I don't think there's any heat oh, okay. at all. Yeah. Like, it's tasty. Smoke Wagon, let's see, which ones have I had? The Desert Jewel is really tasty. That's kind of like their $100 mid tier bottle. Yeah. The Uncut, Unfiltered. What does that run out here? Like 70 yeah, 70 bucks. And then uh, they have their cheap one, which I won't even really call it cheap, but they have, uh, it's just called Smoke Wagon. Like yeah, a smoke I, wagon I actually picked, I picked one up and I forgot what the, the actual the name of it was. Let's look it up and see. Continue. Yes, absolutely. Let, let Zach look up some information for us. So anyway, back to Garrison Brothers. So what they do is they uh, they have a lot of uh, distillery-only releases. And I asked, actually, when I first spoke about this, I misspoke because originally this was a distillery-only. You'd have to drive down there to get it. Okay. But this release for 2020 is getting distroed. So great. Uh, I picked this up at a shop in town, but I'm finding that it's, it's starting to be at some of the big box places like Total Wine. And... Uh, it's available now. It's retail 149, which that's that's on the high end for a whiskey. But um, you know everything's locally sourced. Uh, definitely coming in pretty hot. 57 and a half. I'm taking this metal off. This I want. It's a little. It's a little obnoxious. <laughs> so for those that want to, you know, put the bottle up there to let some people see it. So yeah. 57 and a half. That, that's high. So. I would say most bourbons have been conditioned and actually not so much conditioned, but people in general uh, usually just tolerate like a 45 percenter, which is 90 proof, mm -hmm. which would be like your Blanton's, which if you're a whiskey or bourbon drinker, everybody knows the name Blanton's pretty much and how hyped Blanton's is. But that uh, hyped for good a, reason. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Affordability. I mean, well, not really anymore because it's price has gone up significantly in the it's, past year or two even 60 bucks is if you can get it well, it's 80 bucks. now like retail 80 is still ish right yeah. yeah that's still approachable yeah it is and then you know not thankfully because of covid but unfortunately because of covid uh and these casinos being closed for such a long time it increased a lot of the inventory in vegas and a lot of our local shops were able to get like 
even Whole Foods had Blanton on the shelves for a couple weeks, which usually, if you, if this was a year ago, never. You're not finding a bottle of Blanton just sitting around. I was actually very surprised that I found that one the other day at uh, TW. Yeah. On the strip. Yeah, and on was the a shelf, ra- right? That was a random, there. random find. Exactly. Just walked in, so, checked it out, and there it was. Right. So I, I don't know if that's because of, you know... And I, I'm speculating that the casinos take a, a huge piece of the action, They've but I'm sure to. they do. They've got to. I'm sure with the distro and how it's set up in Vegas, yeah. and get, you know, Nevada, Southern Nevada is probably allocated a certain amount of bottles, yeah. and X, probably 80 to 90% of it goes to the casinos, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, think about how many high end <clears> restaurants <throat> you go to, and it's like Bland's is always on the menu. And um, that cuts, you know, a Whole Foods from getting, you know, their usual one case to probably getting like five or yeah. six cases because there's there's an excess of and it. And like a so. one and a half to two ounce pour is costing you what, 20 bucks? Yeah, like 20 to 30. Yeah. 20 to 30 bucks. Which is, that can be scary. I mean, if you start seeing things that you know, like Jack Daniels or uh, Evan, Jim, um, some of these more noticeable uh, brands, you're going to find those more in the nine to $11. And so $20 could be something that's really uh, scary to you. It could also be something that leads you down the path where you're like, oh, dude, this, this, is, this is the great bourbon. i got to have it. But you might not know a lot about it. And so, um, I don't know, it might lead you down the bad path of making a bad decision and thinking you're drinking something way cooler than it is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you bring up a good point because part of the reason I thought, you know, when we thought about Barrel Buddies was, you know, we've had a lot of these fortunate and unfortunate experiences with whiskey and bourbon at some of these places around yeah. town. Yeah. And I, I can tell you, you know, there's there's a handful of fifty dollar and up pours that I've had of some hyped high end bourbons and whiskeys and scotches mm-hmm. that were completely lackluster. And I could refer you to like some amazing twenty to fifty dollar bottles that are available every day that's not hyped that you can go out and have as a daily drinker. There's plenty of them. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, the biggest one I, I always, I always say this to everybody because a lot of people shit on it. But Elijah Craig, I think, is one of the most approachable, affordable, ah, easy 100%. to get, easy to get, easy to get um, bourbons out there. I agree. It's, it's well, I tell Elijah everybody. Elijah Craig, yeah, no, that is a that's a great that's a great hidden gem. I mean, yeah, if you're not drinking Elijah Craig, I, I feel for you. That's a great. Bourbon. Yeah, and not, and not to take away from from Garrison Brothers. I was just gonna say, let's, let's get back at the, at the, at the drink at <laughs> hand here. We've been talking about all these other bourbons. We're not. Talking oh no, about no, this no. One. We're not. We're not even talking about this spectacular bottle. So back back to the uh, what what I was surprised about. So with this release, they started distroing it, which was surprising because um, from what I was reading last year, they had like a line around. It looked like a, a football field's length, a hundred yards of people lined up waiting to get. You know, mm-hmm. two bottles of this allocated to them. And then, you know, a lot of those people would ship it out to their friends and it kind of got word of mouth. And um, they actually won for 2019 and 2020 uh, the Whiskey Bible uh, Micro, mm-hmm. was it American Micro Craft Distillery of the Year Award? So Garrison Brothers, you know, making a name for themselves. They're, they're a fairly new within the past, you know, decade um, distillery. And I really knew nothing about this. So so before I bought this bottle, uh, you know, going on bourbon subreddit, going on, you know, just internet in general, reading about like what's new for 2020, what are some, you know, bourbons we should check out. And come to find out that Balmora, uh, a lot of people reviewed it, but there was a lot of polarizing reviews. So like there was a lot of people out there that are like, hey, this is great. It's like liquid bourbon candy. It tastes like, you know, it's got creme brulee and like dried fruit and it's super viscous and thick and it's just like a great whiskey now you also got to remember i mean putting down 150 dollars on a bottle of whiskey it's not cheap i mean and and i guess that's you know to each his own because there could be people out there that is like oh 150 bucks like oh yeah yeah that looks beautiful whatever Showing some pictures, some amazing something in a yeah, jar. Yeah, thank you for the fans. And we're and already getting sent, sent some good stuff, <laughs> right? At least it looks <laughs> like it. That's great. So you know, one hundred and you know, one forty nine retail. You're like, whoa, what the hell? But I mean, you go online and it's it's the prices kind of fluctuate. You got to remember, there's a huge secondary market that's out there that where you know, kind of the most infamous name of the secondary market hype is like Pappy, 
old Rip Van Winkle, yeah, yeah. Pappy, uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, otherwise known as BTAC. Like, there's such a hype for some very spectacular whiskeys and bourbons out there that used to be what they call shelf turds that would just sit on the shelf that were like 50 bucks or $100 <laughs> for a, you know, a William LaRue Weller or, a, you know, an Eagle Rare or 18 or Saz, you know, and you could just get it. It was always available. I wanted to see if I could do something. It does not work out. It looks just, terrible. Just I'm bring sorry. the glass I'm a little sorry. closer to the screen. Um, I don't know if you could see the color. It's, but it's dark. Just, it's ruby. It's, it's just beautiful this, red yeah. color. It's just a great ruby color. So let's let's get into this a little bit. Let me read the bottle first. Sure. Really quick. Yeah, so, um, Zach, you can read. You haven't yeah, said a whole Zach, lot. Zach, Zach, read. I'm getting a little sure. parched. All right. So let's see. <clears throat> The Garrison Brothers Texas Straight Bourbon Whiskey gives us great pleasure to bring you our beautiful Balmora bourbon. This magnificent Texas Straight Bourbon Whiskey is bold but majestically crafted, having been aged not once but twice in two completely different oak barrels. The result is a perfectly blended, I'm sorry, perfectly balanced, rich bourbon flowing with crimson candy flavor. Crimson, so you get that red. Yeah, no, you that's can see that red. Yeah. Uh, so earlier, uh, you heard Jimmy over here say, you know, he wanted to pour it, let some of the ethanol come off. That's that's that bite. So for those of you that are afraid of uh, of a bourbon or a whiskey that it, it's really bitey, it's got that alcohol burn. Um, pour it, let it aerate a little bit, like you would with a wine. Let some of that ethanol come off, and then that way you're going to get a lot better uh, of the natural flavor of the bourbon and natural flavor of the barrel. I think a lot of people make that mistake by not doing that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you got to remember, absolutely. And there's a huge uh, portion of people that think this is you just shoot it. You know, there, oh, there's, God, no. there's, you know, Don't there's this that. misnomer that, you know, oh, yeah, some whiskey. Let's do some whiskey shots. Yeah. No, if you're going to do that, yeah, drink the cheap stuff. Well, um, so, well let's cheers. Let's, let's uh, do a little cheers, gentlemen. Let's see, uh, see what we're working with here. So why don't we, uh, we talk a little bit about... Smell what we're getting, and I'll go through a little bit of the steps here. Like, wow, yeah. So, the nose, I mean, the nose mm -hmm. is great. I, I'm it, it smells like they ground up the barrel, yeah, and they've just like infused this with the oak. I mean, and explain, and they kind of go into that. So, oak barrels are charred oak barrels, right is what most bourbon and whiskeys are aged in. Um, I'm not ready for it, but I think we should go through the process of how, like, the whiskey and bourbon is made. Like, we'll get there. I, we'll get there. We'll I mean, get I, there. I don't want to... We're kind of overloading with some information. Barely. A little bit. Barely crawl through. So a couple, a couple of things. When, you, when, you're, uh, when you're enjoying a nice whiskey, you're taking the nose, right? And to do that, you, you literally go left to right, right to left. Take it across, because your nostrils take it differently. And when you breathe it in, keep your mouth open. Like, there's some flavor that's going on in, in your nose. So as you're taking the nose, take it in your mouth a little bit. You can you, you take that air in. So I'm getting a ton of leather. But that candy, so they talk about that bourbon candy. It's a sweet caramel creme brulee. Is an, you said that yeah. earlier. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That charred. Burnt sugar. Burnt sugar charred. That caramel um, that kind of gives it this nice red color that you you know attribute with a good caramel, and then when it hits your when it hits your palate, um, you can look for those things that you've hit in your nose and look for that as your flavor profile, and then that'll just continue to expand and expand and expand. So, Man, yeah, I'm going back to your... green apple. I mean, I get I get a good. Apple pie, it's like caramely apple congeal yeah. in a good way. Yeah, and you get that, you know, that vanilla caramel, that vanilla, you know, burnt sugar, bourbon candy, Werther's mm -hmm. original. That's a, yeah, Werther's, that's a good one. Yeah. Still, and like, like I don't know, like dates, dried fruit, some type of uh, fruit element. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Not Date, I think date is a, is a really, that's a perfect one. Yeah, no, not absolutely. raisin. It's not so sweet. 
Dates is good. Yeah, but just think of that. Like you're you're definitely getting that on the nose. You're getting that you know definitely on the taste. As no, well. you know you know another one. Uh, dried Turkish apricot. <laughs> oh wow! Never had one of those. <laughs> I, I cannot. I've never been to, never never been to Turkey. I have no idea what that is. Uh, so we may what have, we may cigar have. do we recommend with this bottle? Wow, well, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, there's so many out there. So, I, to me, I would go probably with something like uh, Romeo and Julieta or uh, Macanudo is always a like just something easy, nothing too big. I wouldn't go a Robusto or I wouldn't go. Like yeah, that. and I wouldn't go something that would like just blow this up. You, yeah. you couldn't appreciate it, but you know, a nice a nice light like Romeo and Julieta or um, something like that would be fabulous. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't go, like, peppery or something. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'll, I'll talk you got a You got a thought on that? Not much of a cigar smoker. So, See, I'm not I mean, I mean you, have, you have to suggest it to me, and then I can tell you if it goes along with Yeah, it. I mean, I can throw some, like, Rocky Patel and Cohiba. Like, I wouldn't say I'm a big cigar guy either. But I, I definitely, uh, what Brian is saying with, uh, I wouldn't Light go cabinet. something... I go with a nice pipe. I nice stuff it with a wonderful <laughs> Virginia cut and some light Cavendish. Yeah, and that to me, that's what makes this an easy drink. We may yeah. have to do that someday. I yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Motion detected at the front door. Yeah, yeah who's yeah. there? It's, it's our Fort Knox here with our bar setup. But uh, something light. Back to what you guys are saying. If it's a cigar, um, I wouldn't go a, like a like a punch or like a you know maybe a torpedo is is as strong as. So a, a torpedo is a I know it's shape. A, it's just shape and a roll, but it typically is more of a robust and, and darker cigar. Okay. I again, I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not the cigar guy of the of the group. So, uh, cheers again. Cheers. Yeah, another cheers another again. Belmora. Yeah. So one thing you know with with a uh, with a high percentage of <clears throat> alcohol. So this is fifty seven and a half. One thing you got to keep in mind is that you're going to get that. Ethanol. So, like, if you're not used to drinking whiskey or bourbons, and by ethanol we mean that alcohol, um, pungent, astringent, rubbing alcohol smell, but that will evaporate as you, you know, kind of swirl around the whiskey, um, and as you kind of let it air out and sit, just like Brian was saying earlier, as a wine, yeah. like a wine. Mm -hmm. And what that'll do is that'll change a lot of the flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. Well, and the more you get it on your palate, like, don't be afraid at that first bite because my first, my first taste of this. Uh, I had this last night with you. We were <laughs> yeah. testing out some some options for tonight's episode, and um, I don't remember it being quite as like bitey or hot. Like we we will we'll say it's hot, 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 yeah. Hot is just a term that means you taste the alcohol, but I don't remember it being quite as as hot last night. Um, but the more you get it on your palate, the, the quicker you go back for more. Uh, the more that's going to open up and and be more approachable. So don't be afraid of that. If, if you taste that first one, you're like, oh, my God, I can't drink this. It really does smooth out. You know, James was saying it evaporates off and your palate gets used to it and you start to open up some of those flavors. Yeah. And taking it kind of next step is the infamous adding water, adding ice conversation. So there's there's a huge. It might be time for that. It, well, yeah, sure. But I want to go into how polarizing some people, you know, you have a huge group of people out there that state, you know, oh, you got to drink it neat, which basically, for those that don't know, neat is you just drink it straight up, right out of the bottle, you pour it in a glass, and you enjoy it, you sip it. Um, I'm like some alcoholic. people that just drink coffee black, you know, they don't put anything in it, whatever. But it changes drastically, okay? Yeah, so you cool. add a cube of ice, um, you put something on the rocks in general, like, th there's a lot of uh, what I would call kind of like, you know, entry-level... Jack, Crown, Evan Williams, <laughs> Old Crow. Nothing wrong with Old, those. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with those. But there's something you're going to want to put on ice because that's just they just taste better, yeah. chilled, a little bit watered down. It changes. Maybe it's a little club soda. That was that. A little, little, little highball. Little action. Highball. A highball. Yeah. This is yeah. this is for the novice drinker, right? The, the person that's no, this trying is to for get the into daily it. drinker. Oh, okay. No, I was just saying no, for the you're kind of explaining that, but well, yeah. I mean, I just from an audience perspective, it. I don't want to start throwing out a lot of terminology that some people might not know. Mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. I'd like to kind of explain some of that. Yeah, but, we'll uh, yeah. 
So you want to add a little water to this? Because it yeah, does change yeah, it up I a mean, lot. We do, we do have a bottle right there, so why don't you... Uh, Zach, you, you want to crack cracked. that open? Crack open some of that Kirkland's finest. Oh, yeah. Do a little cap. A little so, cap. yeah, so what we do is we like to start off with just a cap of water. So get a, get a nice cold bottle of, uh, you know, bottled water. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, literally, I mean, you could pour out a cap or go, like, you know, officially a cap. Sure. Whatever and you just, uh, you know, just do a little, a little, little dash. And here's what I'm excited about is adding water to this. <laughs> I throw that back down. I did not like it. Really? I hated it. So, uh, but I'm curious because because my initial taste tonight was so different than yesterday. Yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering if <clears throat> if this is a little. It's already that's already completely different. I I'm so amazed. Like it's almost like magic. It, the smell is com completely the, changed or evolved. The nose is definitely rounded out a little bit. That that it breaks that ethanol, so that oh, alcohol I, that alcohol heat comes way down. I don't and know if it I turns, agree with that. See, I, I'll say that I get a lot less ethanol and way more of like brown sugar. <laughs> it seems like the oh, it seems you're, like I I'm getting that. I'm surprised. I don't add, like adding add water to this. Water. It seems like the mouthfeel changes. I don't it, know. It, Would it you say better for the better? Or? For the better. For the better. So like, like the, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to say that. You know, it tastes bad when it's neat. It tastes great, right? It just tastes. Uh, it's got a like a thicker mouthfeel to it. Interesting. When, so, when, you, when you add the, the here, water. Here's one of the things I do notice is the taste of spearmint is oh, very prevalent. Like on the end? It becomes really minty. This is like, now this is something that you would drink on a hot summer night to chill out, to like cool down. I, I get minty goodness. Oh, wow. You hit the nail on the head. It's spearminty. That did just turn into a mint bomb. Right? And spearmint really sticks with you. Like they threw mint in the whiskey which might be off-putting to some people but of it's, water. it's an interesting kick of the water changes things yeah oh. like and i didn't get that mint when we were drinking this without the water <clears throat> very minty wow. really really yeah very spearmint but not in a bad way like in a fun way yeah and that would be weird right spearmint in your bourbon well yeah i mean again i think to zach's point if you're out by the pool or late well, you said that on a late night. Late night? You know, out, chilling out. out? Yeah. There's somebody that likes mint. Yeah, oh. I mean, if you love mints, I mean... KJ, then you're going to love this. Throw a little bit of a uh, dash of water and so good to go. I think that this would be a great yeah. julep. We... we <laughs> the world's most expensive It's really julep. expensive. <laughs> You'd really have to commit to it. But I, I think that it Make could be a, a great julep. julep. Yeah, I would highball this, too, actually. I, I actually wouldn't mind adding a little soda water to this and drinking it as a highball. I think it be a kick and highball yeah i mean if i was down to the last you know quarter bottle i would probably be okay with that yeah just, just throw be like you know what yeah. i got just enough let's let's make a little cocktail I, but yeah no very minty very refreshing i can actually feel my body cooling down yeah same like it's same yeah <laughs> it's very calming it's very ah, ah there we go. but you know i going back to you know a, a sensitive topic among among people is value right so it's a $150 bottle of whiskey. And to some people, that's it's tough to swallow, literally. And at that price point, you, you really have to, you know, because you think about it. I mean, some people's whiskey budget for a month may be $150. Bucks. That's true. So, you know. Patrick, I, I hear you, man. Some people out there <laughs> might be, this might be their bottle for the month, you know, in lieu of five or six, you know, bottles of Elijah Craig or something that, that of course, we get is amazing. And. You, you have to really determine uh, if there's a value. Uh, is it worth it? I, I guess is the question is what I'm getting at. Is, is it worth it? What and, I, you know, I counter that to say you don't buy this. This is not what you buy to, I don't know, in my opinion, to like party hard. I mean, we already talked. You don't shoot this. This is, this is one of those things. It's like I need a nice fine sipper whiskey. I want something that's going to be a little more celebratory. And, and so... You know, this 150, this should last you, even if you're hitting it hard, I, I think that you should um, probably, um, you, you should probably get, get a month out of this. I mean, if you're hitting it really hard, I think you get this, I uh, get a month out of this. Uh, but you know, throw this in the collection, I think you get a year. I mean, if you're, if you're really drinking it in that way, I, I think that, the, you know, $150, that's going to get you a year, depending on how you go through it. Yeah, but... 
I'm going to shift gears a little bit and, and, and let's talk about, I, I want to go, I want to talk to each one of us. I want each one of us to answer this question. Is it worth it for $150? Personal opinion. And I'll, and I'll let Zach start and, and be honest. If you, you think about that price point and I want to hear everybody's opinion on it. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Like I, I, I think it's worth it. Um, I'd like to try yeah, a lot of, um, when it comes to, you know, spending money on alcohol. Um, I mean, a lot of, you know, when, when I really started getting into, you know, the brewery beers and stuff like that, you know, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit away from, you know, the whiskey, it's but, the same stuff. <clears throat> but, you know, it's, um, you're, you're paying for, you know, a, a very fine product. You're paying for something that you say, you're going to try this. You're going to, you may or may not enjoy it. Who knows? Right. But I think it's worth it for the experience. And if you like it. Like, it, like you were saying, um, you know, you, you put it in the collection and it's something that, you know, you can drink on either a daily basis or you can drink it, you know, on a, you know, during a celebratory uh, yeah, special occasion, time. Whatever. Yeah. So I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, for the way I collect and drink, I'm not sure that I would purchase this and put it in my collection. It, it's good. I, I think it's really tasty. Um I think the more I drink this, the more I feel inclined that I'm a fan. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it, I'm kind of on the fence. I think for 150 bucks, it's no value, um, but it's it's really good. So I'd probably, you know what? I I probably would buy it. I'd throw it up on the bar, and I I would keep it as kind of a, hey, you want to try something really interesting? You want to try something really unique? Or even hope for um, I think I would even hope for somebody who comes over to, to see the bar and they see it catches their eye and they're like, Oh, Oh, Hey, Whoa, you got Garrison brothers. Wow. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that could be a, a, a cool thing. So, um, yeah, I, I would say $150 for this is worth it. Okay. Um, $150, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of money in my opinion. I, uh, after having this, I've had it, you know, we're halfway through the bottle here, so I've had it a few times. Um, I'm going to say no. I, I do not believe that. And here's, I'll have some reasoning behind it. So I, I don't believe that this is worth $150 a bottle, right? And my reasoning behind that is, is that I've had many other sub $100 bottles that blew this out of the water. Okay. And non-secondary prices, mind you, because I'm sure there's some stuff that we have up here on the shelf that... Definitely drinking that TX. <laughs> I think there's plenty of... There it is. Um, <laughs> there's plenty of whiskey and bourbons out there that are under this price point that, if you want my personal opinion, um, I wouldn't... Say I had a shop. You came in and you're like, hey, I have $150 to spend. I'm not going to throw you this bottle. I, I will recommend you something that's under a hundred dollars. That's going to taste better. Like I'll be honest with you, I and I'm just as I'm talking, I'm trying to think of like, well, what's a really good example of like sub a hundred? I'm almost willing to say Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. A hundred, the eighteen, the Barrel Proof. Oh, the Barrel Proof. Yeah, no, that's good. That's yeah. crazy good. The eighteen, the eighteen is a little questionable, but the Barrel Proof, I think, for that seventy dollar price point. Yeah, I agree. It's half. It's half the price, a little bit more, and I think tastes just as good. Interesting. I think tastes just as good. So there's there is you know uh, a lot of um, decisions people need to make when they go out there and buy whiskey, bourbons. There's a lot of um, hype, obviously on the internet. There's a lot of you know, and, and I don't know. I don't know where a lot of like the audience or like us like. I do a lot of reading on the internet, a lot of bourbon subreddit, a lot of, um, you know, Facebook groups, whiskey groups, bourbon groups, scotch groups, you know, and it's always, you know, a lot of people hype stuff up. It seems like every year, you know, because it, it's kind of a cycle, right? Like whiskey comes out in seasons. We have yearly releases, et cetera, et cetera. BTAC, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection comes out in the fall and winter. Uh, same with like Old Rip and Pappy and... Um, you get the Wellers kind of scattered out throughout the year, like all the different variants of Weller. And um, there's just so many choices out there. So that's what I got on that. I'm going to have, so again, I'm, 
So if I, yes or no, obviously not worth it. Um, do I like it? I love it. I love this. This is I think this is tasty. Mm-hmm. I would like to share this with somebody. And uh, and that's what a lot of people say is that, you know, they have whiskey and bourbon on the shelves that are special for like moments with like family or with, you know, you know, sitting with their dad on the porch and like it's going to be their last whiskey they're going to have because he's got to fly back home or something. You crack open something special yeah. and you drink this, right? So new flavor profile. What do you What do you got? What Adding, do you got? Add, so I added more water. You probably saw I added. Just I a, did. I, I added did some more water. More water to that sucker. Maybe but I, I, I think I think adding water was a good call. Um, that one capful was not enough. More mint. But um, definitely stays minty. But in the way of like when you crack fresh pine, like a fresh pine branch, pine you get cone? that pine. No pine branch. Like I've never cracked a pine branch and smelled it, so I can't. Really I've never cracked a pine cone. You grew up in North. Yeah, you yeah, grew, you no, grew up in the mountain up, area. I grew up where you like go harvest pine nuts. Yes, yes. No, no, like but like let me let like me if let you me went see. to a pine tree and you like snapped some pine needles. Like let me see if I pine can needles. Correlate. Pine needles is relatable. Okay, pine needles. Pine needles. I get so the flavor I'm getting it's like Oh wow. Fresh saw cut pine, but then you get that like pine sap. Like I get like this that sweet sticky sun warmed pine sap it's almost like the end of summer beginning of fall like when you're in the pine trees and you get that like late summer early fall yeah, smell the, the more, in the pine yeah the more water that you add to it really it does, good yeah it goes yeah car- right. caramelized sugar pass it over please the water not the, oh, not the bottle more of this <laughs> okay. well give me a minute I'm <laughs> sorry. ginger bitus says yeah yeah that's yeah. actually uh, yeah the more water that you add to it so it goes from Dark caramel, okay. very minty, and then piney. very piney. Very, yeah. very yeah. woodsy. I, I feel that. I, I taste I want to drink this around a campfire now. A little more water. Oh, yeah, it does. Let's it actually... A little more water. You know, when you cut it, like when you add a little bit more water, it does open up. Like, I'm surprised. Like, even more. Yeah. But one cap was not enough. Two caps starts to do some magic. But, but I hate to say that. I almost think that this would be... Uh, better on the rocks. Better on the rocks. Like, this might, and I, it, it, it's almost bad to say, like, you want to put no. a $150 bourbon on the rocks? No, because it's kind of like, um, to me, it's kind of like drinking wine, right? You, you, you drink what you like, and yeah. you drink it the way you want to like it. So, especially with bourbon, I, I think it really is a choice thing, and I don't think there's a bad thing there. Got it. We got some chat. We got some people. We got some activity in the chat. <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> yep. Long time um, viewer. First time chatter. What, what does Elizabeth have to say? So Elizabeth say? says, uh, I've been wanting to start a bourbon podcast, but I heard that's whiskey business. Oh. Dead joke. Mom joke. We need the I will, uh, I'll, I'll definitely tell you, it's a whisk. But it's a whisk I'm willing to take. Wow. Yeah. Cheers. Let's move on. Cheers to that. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> 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 I love it. Yeah, that's opened up. That's opened up. So for it's people tasty. that for people that's that are great. joining us, because it looks like we've tripled our viewer count. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, hey! From one we, to three. We, uh, we, are op- we are drinking a All little bit of yeah, Garrison Brothers uh, Balmora. No relation to the STD. And it's coming in at fifty-seven and a half percent, which uh, would t- classify that as a barrel proof. So that's that's a straight out of one barrel. Let's go into that. So single barrel versus like a Blanton's, right? Standard Blanton's. So at a lot of these distilleries, when you have your uh, let's say Blanton's, right? Solid bourbon. Um, Blanton's obviously is in a warehouse of. These are lightweights. Fuck off. <laughs> Hundreds, if not thousands of barrels, right? Jesus. So what they do, these these distillery gurus, these master distillers, is um, they blend it. They blend it. So once it's ready, after the three or four years and they're ready to, you know, bottle today's batch, because they usually batch bottled lanterns every few days, whatever, uh, they, first of all, proof it down. So they blend all these different barrels together. I don't know if they end up cutting it with water, but they bring it down to like 90 proof. Hmm. So Bland's is 90 proof across the board. But you got to remember, distilling alcohol has a lot of variations, and 
barrels change flavor where they're sitting in the warehouse or the rick house, right? They, if they're on like the ground floor, maybe get colder temperatures versus on the top floor by the roof where they're getting a bit more sunshine, a bit more heat. And what that does is that gets uh, the barrel breathing a lot more. Yeah. So with, when the barrels breathe, they're contracting the liquid in and out of the wood, out of the charred oak. Right? So there's a it's lot more of that contraction. Visual aid. Visual, visual aid. That are barrel, visual barrel, barrel contractions. <laughs> and that, like, literally, the juice is going in and out of the barrel throughout Risky the year. Mamas. Throughout the seasons, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Blanton's wants, like, the Blanton's flavor across the board. So what they do is that they have a guy, they blend a few barrels, and he's like, yep, this is what Blanton's tastes like, bottle it. They then step it up. And Blanton's has single barrel, single barrel Blanton's gold label, uh, and a few other of the variants that they just pull it from one barrel. And that one barrel could be from the top, from the, the top floor, from the bottom floor, from the middle, from the side. And that's going to have its own unique flavor. And that's what a lot of these um, like barrel select, like you get a lot of these liquor stores out there across the country that do these um, like barrel picks. So what they do is they shoot an email to Blanton's. And they're like, hey, guys, we want to do a barrel pick. And then what they do is they send you out a kit. So Blanton's will send one of these liquor shops four or five uh, samplings, like little guys, from a barrel. And then they can sit there, you, sip them. You have, an, you have a... I, I do have one of those sample bottles. you got but some it's sample boxed bottles. Up, it's boxed up. All right. I do. I, I just a, thought I you might want to show the viewership. Should we show what a bottle of Blanton's looks like? Yeah, or, bring it. Yeah, that's I'm a great sure. idea, Zach. Show, show that. Yeah, also, uh, we threw in the chat there for everybody. We want to know what your first history uh, with whiskey was or what your first whiskey was. Okay, so you show probably, buddies. You, I like you, that. You've probably seen this bottle before. Yeah, let's see. It's probably one of the most hyped bottles besides a Pappy uh, Van Winkle, Rip Van Winkle. And that is... That one's a T. Blanton's. Yeah. Why, don't, why don't you go through that? Because you opened up the door to the letter. Now I think you need to this explain it. Because there's people out there that don't know about it. Oh, that yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So with Blanton's, uh, it's very interesting and very cool that each of the little horse guys, the jockey and the horse on the top, has a... Get it up there. Get it up there. Oh, oh, see, we can see it. Let's get get out of the way here. Oh, you're, it's at the bottom there. there see you it? You yeah, see it's it? by that hoof. Is this thing on? Hello? Right, right there, right there. See that right yep. there? So there's a little T right there. Each of the Blanton's bottles has a B L A N T O N or an S. Is the right? N repeated or are there two different 